Welcome to SQL Essentials for Beginners course. In this course, we will learn SQL. But before we start learning SQL, let me help you understand some of the terminologies and concepts. So let's start. The first term is database. And that's the first question we want to understand. What is a database? I have written a very simple definition here. A database is an organized collection of structured data. There are two terms here, structured data and database. So first, let's try to understand what is structured data. Structured data is any data which can be represented in the form of rows and columns. In simple words, a structured data can be represented in a tabular form. Here is an example. You can see this is data. Data about some people, their designation, month and year of joining, total days of month, uh, allowed leave some employee data for some company and it can be represented as rows and columns. The first row represent one employee information. The second row represents another employee information and each column represents one attribute or one value about the employee. So for example, the first column represents name, the second designation, third the month, fourth the year and so on. And this is what we call a structured data. A structured data is a data which can be represented in a table like a structure or in a tabular form arranged in rows and columns. So that's very clear. What is a structured data now comes back to databases. So what is a database? Database is an organized collection of tables or structured data. When we say structured data, we simply refer to tables. So database is an organized collection of tables. Very simple. More you will understand as you progress with the course. The second terminology here is database management system or in short DBMS. DBMS stands for database management system. What does it mean? DBMS is a software system used to create and manage databases. So DBMS is a software a software system or type of a software which allows you to create databases and tables and store your data and work with your data. So DBMS is a software. The next item is SQL or we call it SQL. Just to make it easy to pronounce or to speak, the letters are SQL but often we call it SQL. The full form of SQL is Structured Query Language. What is it? SQL is a programming language, right? It is a programming language used by DBMS softwares to define, store, query and manipulate data. And when we call data, we are referring to this structured data or the tables. So SQL allows you to define, define the table structure or the data structure store the data into these tables query or ask questions or ask business questions from this data using the dbms that's what we call query so ask questions or query the data and manipulate data manipulate data means you can update some values you can change those values you can delete you can add new records like that so you can manipulate data you can query data you can store data and you can define data and all that you can do using SQL or SQL language. So SQL is a language that allows you to define, store, query and manipulate data. And this language is used by DBMS, what it means database management systems or softwares. Now let's move on to the next step and try to understand what are the different types of DBMS are available in the market. There are n number of DBMS. When I say DBMS, I'm referring to the database management software or database management system. It is a software. There are 100, more than 100 database management systems or softwares available in the market. But we can categorize them in broadly five, six categories. I've listed six categories here. The first category is known as relational database system. Remember, all these are DBMS or database management systems, a type of software. And then we categorize them into six different categories depending upon what type of capabilities or what type of features they offer. The first category is relational database systems, also known as RDBMS, 
R stands for relational and DBMS is database management system. So first category is relational database systems. And then we have multiple products or multiple RDBMS softwares available from different different companies, different different vendors, different different creators. I have listed three names here. These are the most popular ones. Oracle, it's a RDBMS, MySQL and PostgreSQL. These two are open source. Oracle is a proprietary software by Oracle Corporation. So first type of DBMS is relational database systems. Second type of DBMS is data warehouse systems, short form DW or data warehouses. There are many available in the market just like RDBMS. So I've listed some names here, Teradata, Exadata, Snowflake, Synapse, Redshift, BigQuery, there are many more. I have listed just few which are the most popular ones. Teradata and Exadata are available as a hardware plus software combination. If you want to buy these softwares, these data warehousing systems for your company, you have to buy hardware plus software both. Teradata comes as a hardware plus software as a combined, combined package. Same for Exadata. These four or five names are for cloud. These are available in cloud. Snowflake is available in cloud. Uh, Synapse, Redshift, BigQuery, all these are available in different different cloud platforms. Then there is a third category of databases or database management systems. These are called NoSQL database system. NoSQL looks like these database management systems do not support SQL programming language, but that's not correct. They say NoSQL stands for not only SQL. It means for these databases, you can use SQL plus you can use other languages also. So that's why they call it NoSQL database systems. There are two very popular uh, NoSQL databases, Cassandra and DynamoDB, but they are of NoSQL database system type. Then fourth category is document database systems. And there are again two popular names in that category, MongoDB and Cosmos DB. Then fifth one is distributed or big data database systems. There are two very popular in that category is Spark and Databricks. And then finally, we have graph database systems. And there are two popular names in uh, that category, Neo4j and Napcho. So there are six different types of database systems and they all are classified in these categories because they have different types of capabilities. They serve different types of purpose. They are required for different types of requirements. Right. We are not going to learn in the details of all these, why they are different, what are the difference. That will be too much. We want to learn SQL here. So we'll talk about SQL. So now that you know that there are so many um, database systems, there are six categories here. So you might be thinking about one simple question. Do we have multiple SQL languages for multiple databases? Right. There are different databases in each category, different products like Oracle, MySQL, PostgreSQL. There are three products, three vendors available in the market for RDBMS only, right? And there are many more. I've listed only three. So do they offer different types of SQL language? Do I need to learn different SQL language for Oracle, MySQL and Postgres? Similarly, we have five, six categories here. So do I need to learn a different SQL language for data warehouse systems like these? Do I need to learn a different SQL language for NoSQL databases like these, right? So that question obviously comes in our mind. If we have to learn all these different, different SQL languages, it's going to be a big headache. But fortunately, we don't have to. So out of these six different types of databases, we exclude graph database systems, right? Graph database systems are completely for different purpose. They store data differently. They don't store data in form of tables. They don't store structured data, in fact. And they offer limited SQL capabilities. They offer different type of query language. So if you exclude this, the graph database systems, uh, other five types of database systems, they all offer similar kind of SQL language, almost same, with some minor differences, but almost same. Why? Reason is very simple. If everyone starts designing their own different, different SQL language, it will be very difficult for professionals like us to work 
on different databases because learning curve will be very difficult. We will have to learn different different SQLs. So to overcome that problem, and it is a problem for business also. If a company wants to implement Oracle, they will have to hire someone who knows SQL designed for Oracle or SQL language for Oracle. And if company wants to use Cassandra, they will have to hire someone who knows SQL designed for Cassandra, and which will be a difficult problem, a difficult manpower problem for companies. So things are standardized, right? To overcome that problem, SQL language is standardized. So let's talk about the SQL language standard. There is one organization called NC. They have defined the SQL standard. We call it NC SQL standard so that all database systems, all DBMS, whether it is vendor X or vendor Y, whether it is in X category or in Y category, whatever category it is, whatever vendor it is, they all can follow same SQL language. And that's why NC has defined the NC SQL standard. The first NC SQL standard was defined in 1986 and it is known as SQL 86 standard. That was the first standard defined by NC. And then over a period of time, they kept on enhancing, improving, revising, adding more capabilities and features, uh, enriching the language. So you can see some history here. After 86, in 89, SQL 89 standard was defined and it was a minor revision uh, on top of SQL 86. The major revision came in 1992. By that time, the database systems were matured, industry was matured, they learned a lot of things based on the previous experiences. So in 1992, SQL 92 standard was defined by NC and it was matured and a major revision on top of SQL 89 uh, standard. And since then, since SQL 92, uh, standard was defined, this has become a kind of core or de facto for any database. Almost every database follows SQL 92 standard at least. But standards keep on evolving. So in 99, SQL 99 standard came and they added some new features like regex, recursion and complex data types. Uh, SQL 92 it stands as it is. On top of SQL 92, they added some additional features, additional definitions about the language in SQL 99. Then in 2003, SQL 2003 came and they added capabilities for XML, how to handle XML data. In between, there were many more revisions almost every year, some minor revisions for advanced capabilities on the SQL. Uh, latest one was SQL 2023, which added JSON capability. You can now manipulate JSON data also using SQL standard. So SQL 2023 was defined for that. So the point is that SQL language is standardized, standardized by the industry using the NC SQL standard. Most of the database systems that we learn or most of the popular database systems that exist in market follow SQL NC SQL standard. At least they follow SQL 92 standard. Some databases follow 99, some 23, uh, 2003, and some even follow the latest one, right? So we have to learn one SQL language, which is called NC SQL language. But don't take it uh, seriously because different different database systems different different categories have some minor variations so if you are working on a particular database you may have to refer uh, some syntax documentations for that uh, database if your nc sql syntax is not working but in this course we will be following nc sql standard we will be learning most of the things using nc sql so it applies everywhere to every database now let's come back to next question. We talked about six different database category. For learning SQL, we will have to use some of the database for executing our examples, for understanding concepts, for doing hands-on, for doing practice, for doing the exercises, right? So which one of these category we will use? Because it is not practically possible to use all of these categories. So we'll have to choose one category of this software of DBMS and one software amongst various available options in that category to do our exercises, practice, learning and all that. So I prefer using this category, distributed or big data database systems. And there are two um, popular products in that category, Spark, Apache Spark, which is open source 
and Databricks, which is a cloud-based system. And we will be using this. Why? Why not all this? Right? There are few reasons. Follow ANSI SQL 99 because this system follows mostly the SQL used in these systems or this category mostly follows SQL 99 standard, which is pretty much mature with few exceptions. There are few here and there uh, exceptions in the syntax which uh, doesn't follow exactly SQL 99 standard, but that exists for every database. You choose any of these database, any of the product, they may not be following 100% NC SQL standard for some technical reasons. Same way, Spark will not be following 100% NC 99 uh, SQL 99 standard, but mostly it is NC SQL 99. Uh, it also offers some features or capabilities that were added after SQL 99 up to SQL 2023, right? Many advanced features like working with XML, working with JSON and lot of other capabilities. So that is an added advantage. And this is big data ready, right? In today's world, uh, data is growing, keep on growing, growing, growing. So we are living in the big data world. So learning SQL on the big data system is uh, advantages in itself. It has its own benefits. So we will be big data ready with our SQL knowledge. So we will be using this category, but most of the SQL that we learn applies to all of these five categories. Graph database systems are exception, as I mentioned earlier. So that's all for this first uh, lecture. I hope you learned some terms and now you understand what we are going to use for our learning. See you again in the following lecture. Keep learning and keep growing.